Greetings, weary travelers and fellow story gremlins to the latest installment of Say it with me. Feelings are valid. Mistreating people is not. Yes, we got some more wedding shenanigans today, and Mother Nature has sucker punched me in the uterus, so this is gonna be fun. Why not raise my blood pressure some more, eh? So yes, we're going to read some stories of people not being their best selves, and we can remember that there's a better way. All right, goobers, grab your cozies and snackies, and let's head on into it. Huge thank you to the owners of the stories who have kindly let me read them. And if you have any stories you'd like to share, you can either email me or there's links below to submit. Which one do I start with? You want a wedding cake for how much? Oh boy. Five dollars. <laughs> it's like the three-tiered, like the most lavish thing you've ever seen. I would give you a seashell. I was very excited to receive an inquiry about making a wedding cake on my home bakery Instagram account. Yay! The lady gave me her phone number to hammer out details, so I gave her a ring. The one ring to rule all the cake. Maybe that's where the behavior came from. We know that the ring, the one ring corrupts. She informed me right away that she didn't want her time wasted. Nor do I, madam. And if I wasn't serious about doing this, then to let her know immediately. It's definitely an interesting opening. Like, yeah, that's the purpose of the phone call. I don't know if it's necessary to put it that way, though. She told me... She told me her wedding was in December, and she just wanted all the details arranged and done. I told her I wasn't in the business of committing to massive projects without some details, so asked what she was considering. That seems reasonable. Her energy going into it is definitely interesting. She wanted three tears propped up on a sparkly acrylic stand. She wanted fresh flowers, white roses, and baby's breath. I love some names for flowers. <laughs> Baby's breath? What even is that? I'll probably look it up and put it on screen. But yeah, there's something about that name. It's just like, oh, what's next? Pinecone farts? In a cascade down and around the cakes, which should use that quilted technique all over as the base. Or if I could use a mix of fresh and sugar flowers, that was acceptable too. But she could tell if the sugar flowers were store-bought, so I had to make them myself. I see. And you know you get store-bought, like... Confectionery flowers? Is that what they're called? She wanted the base tier to be chocolate, the middle tier to be carrot, and the top tier to be strawberry. That is an interesting combo. I do love carrot cake though. She also wanted one of those little toy dogs you hide at the back with a tiny bit removed to make it look like a bit bitten to the cake. That's actually so cute. I love, I love that. I've seen pictures of that kind of thing before. This dog was supposed to be an Australian Shepherd because that's what she and her fiance own. And if I couldn't find an Australian Shepherd... <laughs> If I couldn't find an Australian Shepherd action figure or toy, I should make it out of fondant. That'd be a lot of work. She asked me how much I would charge for a cake like this. She informs me she's local and has heard really good things and has seen my ads on Instagram and they want this to be a blowout celebration. I told her that I would have to do some math and pricing, but I think she could anticipate a minimum of 850 to 900, which I know was lowballing, but I needed some time to do sourcing and math. She told me she wanted it for 50. For all of that? 50. <laughs> and like, to be fair, I don't know what pricing should be like for like cakes and, you know, other wedding stuff, but like for all of that, like and how intricate she wants it, like that's a lot to ask for only 50. <laughs> I braced myself and decided to play dumb, so I said, that's a lot of cake for 50 people. The rest of the conversation followed. Oh no, the calm before the storm. Her, no, $50. <laughs> Me, you want to spend $50 on ingredients? It's just like trying so hard, like, please don't say what I think you're saying. Like, let this be that you mean it for ingredients or it's for 50 people. Please don't do this to me. Her, no, for the cake, the whole cake. Me, $50 won't buy the flowers for a cake this size. Her, well, that's our budget, take it or leave it. Me, okay, I'm leaving it. <laughs> Her, oh, that's just great, really professional. What are you, new at this? <sighs> If the cake was like super, super simple, which like, if you only have $50, I think there's lots of other things you can do. You can either find someone for cheaper and or just get it really simple. I think you can get like a decent cake for just 50. But like, if you want all of that, how do you not see that as unreasonable to get so specific and then want it to only be $50. Like things like this are just like honestly so fascinating. Cause it's like, how does, 
where is the disconnect happening? Because that's especially how unnecessary that like, what are you new with this? It's like, all right, dude, I know wedding planning stressful, but like, this is my business. Don't disrespect it. Me. No, you're just delusional. <laughs> Her. Don't get snippy. I'm going to go somewhere else. Me. Good luck. $50 won't buy you three plain cakes at Walmart. Actually, I can see that being a thing. It is funny how she says don't be snippy and she was being snippy first. <laughs> I think there can be something to be said about like being snippy back, like is it necessary? No. But even still, you can't be rude and not expect like an adverse reaction to that in some way. Whether it's someone being rude back to you or like just like, hey, that wasn't okay. Actions have consequences. I think it's totally possible to have like a nice little cake for 50. You just gotta know what to, how to work around that. Don't try to like, it ain't cool to try to just like force a business owner to not only do it, but like, but then also completely disrespect their business. Naughty. Yeah, being disrespectful, great way to not get anything. <laughs> You're not entitled to people's business. Like it was both not a good fit, both in your budget and their, you know, prices and everything, and you're being rude. Don't be surprised that you're not gonna get a cake. Friendzilla and Bridezilla story time. Huzzah! Hi all, I'm going to unburden myself from a situation that happened 12 years ago. Oh boy. You're like, if this is gonna haunt my dreams, it's gonna haunt yours too. We're here for you, fam. <laughs> Whatever's gonna help the healing process. When I was getting married, as it still confuses and haunts me to this day. Background. In my late 20s, I had a friend that I had met at work. She and I were the same age and inseparable for two years. We walked together during our lunch breaks and spent time together outside of work. I considered me my best friend. <laughs> That's probably misspent to say her. I am my best friend, which honestly, I say that you should be your best friend. You deserve love from yourself. Say something nice to yourself. Give yourself a hug. Good. I believe in you. We met our boyfriends at the same time and she became engaged one month after I did. I was so excited. I thought it was so lovely to have someone so close to talk wedding stuff with who wouldn't get sick of it and understood everything. I invited her to be in my bridal party and completely understood when she said that she would be very busy and might not be able to commit to that. That's reasonable. It's good to be op open and communicative with that. <sighs> it sounds like it's not going to continue to be like that, which is a shame. Communicate your feelings, goofballs. She told me that she wasn't having any bridal party at all, so I didn't worry that she hadn't asked me to be in hers. I thought everything was going well and was careful to be courteous of her, even scheduling my wedding to be one month after hers so as not to interfere with her wedding. That in itself is so interesting to think about, like, if it's, like, okay or not for weddings to be close together. I think it depends. I feel like I've read stories before where it's, like, it's very clear someone's trying to, like, steal someone Someone else's thunder at least it seems like that right we don't know the full story but you know what it seems like and there's other times where it's like like if people's wedding so happen to land on like the same month i don't think i'd like to think that doesn't necessarily have to be a problem when she told me she was worried about affording her dress i even offered to help pay for one oh boy that's really sweet but i don't think that's a good idea i love where that's coming from but i hesitate to be on board with that especially when you're planning your own wedding i think I think it's appropriate to just focus on yours and like absolutely help and like maybe finding something that's cost effective. I don't know about paying, like helping pay for it. Despite making every effort to keep costs low for my own wedding, fake flowers, make my own decorations, etc. Then several months later, things rapidly change. No! Weddings can really be a litmus test sometimes. When it came time for a bachelorette party, I showed up to this restaurant it was being held at, a place we loved going to together, and I found myself to be an hour late with things going full swing already. I'm always early, so I was horrified to learn I had the wrong time. Even worse, there sat three people with shirts that indicated they were bridesmaids. Oh. That's awkward. I was so confused as to why she had lied about her bridal party, but didn't want to ruin her special day, so I just shut up and ate. Ugh. Yeah, that, that would be hard to be. Like, especially if this person kind of became your best friend. It's like, that is that is a weird thing to lie about. Maybe, let's give benefit of the doubt, maybe she changed her mind and within the busy busyness maybe forgot to tell her. Yeah, <laughs> Trying to be nice. It would definitely be hard to not feel hurt by that, because especially if they told you that they planned on not having any. Hug time, OP. You seem like a very sweet person, because even though that hurt your feelings, you didn't want to ruin anything. Then the party moved to her house where an XX toy party was held. Everyone got a playful name tag at the door, things like <laughs> sex kitten, hot date, etc. Then there was my tag, C Dumpster.
I'm sorry, what? Mm, madam, you're really testing the boundaries of my benefit of the doubt. I was shocked and felt humiliated, but again, didn't want to ruin her day or look like a prude. I just don't even know what that's supposed to mean. I spent the next few hours feeling horrible, and the only time I spoke to my friend was when she berated my ideas for my handmade decorations as tacky. Oh my goodness. Hugs, come here. The sleepover will shroud you in love. I left without replying, desperate for the night to end. Then the straw that broke the camel's back came, my wedding. She brought her roommate as her plus one, not her now husband. And I later heard that they spent the night loudly insulting my wedding and decorations. <laughs> Ew! Bullying my out of town friends into giving up their assigned table. And the roommate harassed one of my husband's friends so badly that he left early. <laughs> Man, a person's gotta just be so, so insecure about themselves to do such rude things like this because like with people in general it's like i hope she improved but wow i hope she received consequences for that because <laughs> the kicker to all of this is that they went in together on a wedding gift for me a 25 dollars chili's gift card i spent hundreds on her present and would have rather she give me none at all rather than that Ugh, gifts are hard because it's like oh still a gift but also it's hard to believe that that's, that's out of the goodness of her heart it feels more like a slight with all this other information bad vibes after my wedding she pretended i didn't exist anytime our paths crossed what 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 what's going on which left me in limbo over what had gone so horribly wrong in our relationship you're like what did i do that has to be just such a jarring experience like you think that you're like best friends with somebody and then they they turn around and act like this what happened? I never did figure out why she suddenly hated me, and it still haunted me to this day. Thank you for reading my huge wall of text. I appreciate the chance to unburden myself. I am also befuddled. Like, w update to answer common questions. One, her fiance never hinted at being attracted to me and seemed overall to be a very quiet and calm person. She was definitely the talker and leader of their relationship. Two, it is possible that she was jealous and I missed all of the signs. I didn't want to come across as vain in my original post, but I did lose over 50 p pound. P but I did lose. <gasps> all this audacity is messing with my ability to speak. But I did lose over 50 pounds of weight leading up to my wedding. We both said we would diet, but she kind of quit her diet after saying she'd lost enough to be happy. I took that at face value and continued to work my literal butt off, lol. She never said anything catty about it or even brought it up, so I had dismissed it as a possibility at this time. Your responses are giving me a lot to think about, thank you. You do not deserve the buffoonery. Even if there is something that we don't know about that this person may not be telling us because you know, these stories are one-sided. We don't we don't get the whole thing. But still, even with that, it's hard to believe that this supposed friend of OP's did this out of like ignorance that they didn't like mean to do these things cuz they they seem very deliberate. Even if there's something that about OP that we don't know, all of that was so unnecessary and hurtful. I always like to try to leave room for that, but like man, that only goes so far too because oh my goodness. Hugs to you, OP. Am I the a-hole for not inviting my stepsister to my wedding after she accused me of trying to steal her thunder? Oh dear. Insecurity. I, 30 female, got engaged to my longtime partner, Matt, 32 male, and we were thrilled to start planning our wedding. We decided to have a small, intimate ceremony with close friends and family. Among the potential guests was my stepsister, Emily, 28 female. We don't have a great relationship, but I didn't want to create unnecessary drama, so I intended to invite her and her husband. The issue began when I shared our wedding date with the family. Emily immediately reacted negatively. Great start. Saying our wedding was too close to her planned baby shower, okay, which was scheduled for the following month. She accused me of stealing her thunder by having my wedding so close to her event. I think there can be some validity, depending on what the situation is about like events being too close together. Like even simply like, people in their lives being able to go to like the events like that can create some friction but like the whole steal your thunder like why can't we both shine plus these are two completely different events they're both important no one's saying one is more important than the other and that's where it's frustrating that the stepsister is like kind of feels like she's saying that the wedding isn't as important as her baby shower it's like no both are important both can absolutely exist come on we can both have a wonderful time I was shocked by her response because we had never discussed her baby shower date. Oh. Oh, that's helpful. Too, yeah, too close to her planned baby shower. So no date was set yet. And sure, there's something to be said about it being around 
a similar time. And I'm sure that can be frustrating, but to tell your family member that like them having their own event, especially if they're trying to be conscientious of yours, is trying to steal your thunder? It don't gotta be like that. And I couldn't have known about it when we chose our wedding date. I tried to explain this, but Emily insisted that I should have somehow known and adjusted our plans to accommodate her. Emily, if there were no plans, it is not reasonable to expect them to be able to know when to choose their wedding date. Yeah, this definitely feels more than just about the, the scheduling. Feels like an unfortunate case of insecurity. But yeah, that, that's frustrating, like when there's not even any actual conversation about it and yet a person just expects you to accommodate them, it's like, no. It'd be a diff- it'd be a very different story if we've had conversations and we're trying to be mindful of each other and, you know, leave space for each other's happy events. It's possible, but you gotta talk to me. I cannot read your mind. Last I checked, I am not Charles Xavier. The tension escalated with Emily called a family member to discuss my selfishness in planning my wedding near her baby shower. <sighs> During the meeting, she accused me of being inconsiderate and trying to overshadow her life events. <laughs> she didn't even talk to you. Unless there's some kind of misunderstanding happening, it sounds like she didn't even talk to you first, which is on her. It is not your fault that she's not properly communicating with you. The rest of our family members seem torn, with some taking her side and others understanding my perspective. Again, it's like unless there is just a misunderstanding happening, if for some reason she believes you've had a conversation, it doesn't seem like it. Because there's a possibility of that, but there's also the possibility that they're just taking her side because they're enabling. In the end, I felt like I was being treated unfairly and that Emily was making unreasonable demands. So I made the difficult decision to not invite her to our wedding, fearing that her presence would only add stress and tension to our special day. Now our family is divided, and some family members are angry at me for not inviting Emily. She continues to claim that I'm the one who's being selfish and unreasonable. So Reddit, am I the a-hole for not inviting my stepsister to my wedding after she accused me of trying to steal her thunder? I don't think so. As per what you've shared, there wasn't a conversation. Like, it would be a different story if, if she had a conversation with you, and if it was truly going to cause an issue, then she needed to be responsible about it and talk to you about it. Because not only, like, like I said before, I like to think that, that there's events close together that doesn't necessarily need a problem need to problem? That doesn't necessarily need to be a problem. If there is a problem happening, there's probably needs to be a different conversation to be had. Because this just seems like a very case of like, she seems really insecure about herself and her important events, which is like, no, you don't need to feel like that. Both of our events are just as valid as each other, just as wonderful as each other. Let's have a conversation, work this out. Behavior like this is so indicative of like, there's something, it's not really about this. This is about your relationship with me. And those moments can be hard, but there is a responsibility to communicate openly about it and figure out what's really going on. If she's not willing to have the conversation, I don't think it's unreasonable to not invite her to the wedding. Because sometimes, if a person shows that they're going to disrespect their relationship with you, then there needs to be consequences. Sometimes that consequence needs to be, you can't come. Sorry! Hope you learn to be better, because that's the other thing too. I like to believe in the, the ability of open communication and, you know, people be vulnerable with each other. But you can only do that so much. The other person also has to choose to do that. If she chooses not to, that's not your fault, Opie. Because yeah, I'll always be an advocate of that. Like, do your best to communicate honestly and compassionately with people. But if they're not coming to you, if they're not meeting you halfway, that's not your fault. Valid feelings, not valid behavior. Someone suggested I post this story from my wedding here featuring my husband's ex. Important info, we decided to have a micro wedding with just our immediate family there, around 10 people. We got married at a venue that is known for holding very large events, but we hired a smaller room there. My husband has a child with his ex, so sees her quite often for things related to my stepkid. Makes sense. Good on them for being present in their kids' lives. We were always planning on inviting her to the wedding to see their kid all dressed up and to generally keep a good co-parenting relationship. Yeah. Before we invited her, she informed DH, who's DH, I don't know what that means, that she'd be there and asked when and where it was. He was a little taken aback, but as we were planning on inviting her anyway, he just told her. On the day, she showed up to our morning ceremony wearing the shortest dress I've ever seen, over stockings and suspenders. Huh. The suspenders could be seen for a good six inches before the bottom of the dress. Skyscraper heels, nightclub makeup, and costume jewelry. My father actually pulled me aside to ask who hired a stripper. The outfit itself? 
Fine. At a wedding ceremony? I don't know about that. I found out afterward from mutual friends that she had texted all of them asking when they were getting there. Because she invited herself, we hadn't thought to let her know it was a small ceremony. And when they let her know it was family only and the reception was completely separate, she began to panic a little. And I had the best petty revenge. I asked everyone to be extra nice to her. Every time she tried to sneak away, someone would engage her in conversation. She was extremely uncomfortable and ended up sitting down with her coat covering her. The wedding went off without a hitch. I'm not sure what she expected to happen, but it all worked out fine in the end. Definitely a very odd choice of outfit for a wedding. I unfortunately don't get the impression that that was done in good faith, because there can be reasonable debate on what's appropriate for a wedding. I don't know if... I don't know if this is one of them. This feels weird for a wedding, honestly. All right, that's all I have. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you all so much. Hope you enjoyed and maybe learned something. I hope you're doing well, but if not, I hope this video has brightened your day at least a little bit. If you have any stories, wedding or otherwise, then email me or there's links below. Huge thank you again to the OPs for allowing me to read their stories. These are pretty interesting. And yeah, that's it. Take care of yourselves and each other. Do your best to be a good human and I will see you in the next video. Bye.